kickoff of Southwestern homecoming football is upcoming in two minutes on the Coyote by 97 KWEY Radio in Weatherford. Don't touch that knob, Bob. It's time to hop now. I'm wearing my chit chat hat. I'm laying out cold hard back. outside the city. You're starting about five minutes late, and it's about to start at two, finish two and five. Can't handle a white red number, the bulldog and solid navy blue with white helmets. Here's the approach on the kickoff. High end on the end, takes the little brown, the field of the ball, and yard two deep in the end zone to the five. He's to the 10, the 15, went into the 20, and Willie Brown after the 25 yard line. Tackle was made by Donald Phillip. Came at a five, 10, 20, 10 pound kickoff uh, because Panhandle didn't bring in uh, Alvin Wilson. Glad winning the quarterback, I have the motion. And then with a five-man defensive front, here's the handoff to the fullback, Keith Kizzy, and Kizzy across the 30 after the 32-yard line. Tackle is made by a fan of the I think the play was designed to bounce outside, and he saw wide outs to both sides. Nice formation, fan of showing now a six-man front. They give up the middle, straight ahead again goes Kizzy, as Kizzy gets out to the 35-yard line. And Medigan, you would assume anyone named Texan would be from Texas. Wrong. He's from up the 35-yard line. Right out to both sides. High formation. He's again to Kizzy. He's got the first. As Kizzy across the 40, out to the 32-yard line. Keith Kizzy on the carry. The tackle made by Panhandle's first place down with the ball game. So far, three carries for Kizzy. He's picked up three trips to the right side. Single right out to the left side. Of course, it's nice to be playing in the daytime. I can see a lot better today than I can at night. I'm going like night football. Back to throw the football is Brad Woodard. Woodard steps up, wobbly pass across the middle. I think somebody got a hand on it. So got a hand on him. Texan Milton is 96. 65 to 65 passing, five interceptions, four touchdown passes. Elgin. Left hand split, flag to the right side. Out of the eye formation, here's the uh, quick pitch back to Kizzy. And Kizzy across the 40 out to the 35 yard line. There's Keith Kizzy on the carry for Southwestern. Tackle is made by the Panhandle Aggies. Hit up those corners. Uh, yes, I do. And line pass it. Third down and seven. Left hand split, flank the right side. Eye formation. Panhandle has uh, six men up in the line of scrimmage. Only drop off two. And Woodard drops back to throw. Woodard steps up, throws wide open. Kizzy at the 30. And Kizzy down to the 27 yard line. Keith Kizzy throwing the pass at the 30. The tackle made by Panhandle's Richard Chin of Mississippi Junior College. Here's a first down to the Bulldogs. 28 through for over 2,000 yards is followed here at Butler County. Right hand split. Flank him right to the left side out of the eye formation. Woodard may be audibling at the line of scrimmage, gives the ball off to Willie Brown. Brown across the 25, and Brown got spun around. Five yards to go for the first down. The last play that, uh, the pass play that Woodard completed to Kizzy, he got left end split Alvin Milton, Reggie Jackson wide to the right side, eye formation again. Panhandle stacking lots of people up on the line of scrimmage, and got six up on the line of scrimmage. Short drop by Woodard, throws complete to uh, Milton down at the 18 yard line. He's going to be short of the first down as he was curling back. Top receiver for uh, uh, Southwestern uh, this season. Okay, we're going to alert Ron back at the station. Ron, we're going to get the telephone line. If you can get the telephone line set up, we're going to switch back to the telephone line. Here's a uh, handoff off the right side down to the 15 yard line of carry for Southwestern goes with a ground. So let's go.
extra point kick is up. The kick is good. There's a timeout on the field with 10 14 left to play in the first quarter. It's the Southwestern Bulldogs 14, the Panhandle Raggies nothing. The old way is to get a right hip to get some force on and then stand around and everybody in the place and this over check. The new way. Got to about the 15 when Willie Brown put a helmet on the ball, knocked it loose, and scooped it up and took it in. Here's the uh, kickoff by Jeff Steindorf, end over end high kick as uh, Earl will let the ball hit in the end zone and get away from it. It'll go out of the end zone, and Panhandle will start at their own 20 yard line. They didn't want to risk it twice. Almost scores a touchdown. Everybody was excited on the ensuing kickoff. Yarborough wears number two. They're in high formation. Uh, Jimmy Candidate is the fullback. John Stell is the uh, tailback. Back to throw. As Yarborough loads up, throws sideline. The pass almost intercepted by Jake Jensen as the pass was intended for Aaron Gomez, the wide receiver, and we've got a flag back upfield. I think it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be motion. It happened on the right side of the uh, panhandle offense. I don't know whether it's going to be a legal procedure or offsides against the Bulldogs. It looks like it's going to be offsides Bulldogs. Is uh, the left... Be the first three. They'll move the ball out to the 25, make it now second down. Uh, for the uh, second home game for the Southwestern. They just have four home games scheduled this year. Ty Bentley is split wide to the near side. Yarborough, the quarterback. Offset eye formation, hands the football off to the tailback, and across the 25 out to the 27-28 goes Marcus Pitchford. 5,760-pound freshman out of Lawton High, where he rushed for nearly 800 yards last year and scored seven touchdowns for the Wolverines. Wide to the right side, Aaron Gomez. Wide to the near side is John Lyles. High formation. Pitchford is third on their depth chart at tailback, so he's getting the start. Here's the handoff to Pitchford again, and ooh, Pitchford's going to be laid out as the Bulldogs' good penetration. Mark Patterson was one of them that got in. He was Robert Newberg as they laid out the smaller Pitchford, and he loses a yard. Now, Pitchford, as I said, uh, he came into the burn. Wide to the left side, Aaron Gomez, the sophomore from Dalhart, Texas. Offset eye formation, Bulldogs four-man defensive front. Here's the give, straight ahead goes Pitchford again, and Pitchford gets out to the 28-29 yard line. Tackle made by Gary Bigelow, 296-pound senior from Savannah, Oakland, beating the Baltimore Orioles 3-2 after five. Thanks back to punt the football away is from Mesa, Arizona. He's fourth in the conference at punting at 38 yards a kick. Just a shade in front of the southwestern Jeff Steindorf, who's also averaging about 38 yards a kick. Single uh, safety back for Southwestern. We've got whistles and flags as Southwestern was doing a lot of moving. It was the illegal procedure against the Aggies. Ted Thomas out of Oklahoma City is the uh, referee. Jim Watson of the Edgerton of Midwest City is the field judge. Five-yard penalty assessment against the line. Ball snap back to Shanks. No rush. Gets the uh, kick away. Going to be fairly short. Hits at the 45 of Southwestern. Takes a panhandle roll across the 40 to the 39-yard line. It'll be down. No return by Southwestern's Jeremy Caleb on the punt by Shanks. Hogs lead it 14 to nothing. They put together a drive, then recovered a wide out to both sides. High formation as Brad Wood is a quarterback. Six-man defensive front for the Aggies. Here's the handoff. Willie Brown going to be wrapped up in his own backfield, coming across to make the tackle for a wide left. Milton at a split end. Jack Jackson set behind the line of scrimmage. Here's uh, play action. Woodard uh, zips it out to Reggie at the 45. Jackson to the 50. Jackson down to the 45-yard line of Panhandle. As the Aggies trying to rip the ball away from him after he made the reception. They uh, to a hold or an illegal, that's they're going to call it, illegal use of the hands. Now, and then they're going to mark the, mark the uh, spot from there. So it'll be eight yards. Not Cleveland, Oklahoma. Not Cleveland, Ohio, but Cleveland, Texas. Right end split, flanker left, in motion comes Willie Brown to the right side, back to throw the football, rolling right is Brad Woodard, Woodard looking, Woodard uh, going to tuck and run as he cuts back across the middle, 45 down to the 48 yard line, got up close to where he needed to go over the first down, Jackson Molson and also Steve Horton, flanked wide to the left side, Reggie Jackson, Panhandle with a bunch of people up on the line of scrimmage, a couple of linebackers, here's the handoff to Willie Brown across the 50 to the 49 and Willie will pick up the first down for Southwestern. Bulldogs have their fifth of Panhandle. One of them coming in is Jack Baker, defensive tackle. The edges are just uh, blasting and uh, knocking Panhandle backwards, and uh, that's always good if you're if you're the offensive line. First and ten at the 49. Here's the give to Willie Brown up the middle, and uh, Brown slashes down to the 47-yard line. The tackle Quayley, a former Southwestern Bulldog who played on Southwestern's National runner-up team in the left. Jackson wide right. In motion goes Keith Kizzy. Back to throw is Woodard. Throws complete to Milton across the middle. 30 down to the 25. Nice slant in route. You said, Chuck, that is a tough, tough play to try to defend. 
Wide right is Milton. Wide left is Jackson out of the eye. Panhandle with six men up on the line of scrimmage. Quick pitch to Willie Brown trying to go outside. Side steps one tackler and uh, bounces off of another and is finally knocked down at Shanks. Now Shanks is a, uh, he's number 26. High formation, wide outs to both sides. Panhandle, Panhandle four down linemen, two stand up ends. Here's Woodard, throws, pass, almost picked off, and it's Shanks again. Roger Shanks, number 13. Shanks is the I'm a, a slant in there from the near side. It, it could be a fake pass, and it's on a fly pattern here, fake in the middle. Shotgun formation, trips right, single wide out to the left side. Direct snap back to Woodard. Comes to uh, Willie Brown coming out of the backfield. Willie takes the uh, ball and carries it down inside the 25 to about the 10 freshman from Lone Grove. That'll make it for the 36-yard line, make it a 46-yard field goal attempt by Jeff Steindorf. Ball snap back, spotted down. The uh, kick is off to the left, no good by Steindorf. As Steindorf hangs his head as he comes off, the uh, field goal attempt comes with 3.34 left to play in the first quarter, so the Bulldogs trying to put more points on the board to come up empty. They still lead it 14 tonight. Eric Yarbrough, any quarterback for Panhandle. High formation for the Aggies. As Yarborough takes the snap, Yarborough back to throw, being flushed out of the pocket, Yarborough rolling right, throwing, the pass is caught by John Lyles, and Lyles driven out of bounds at the 35-yard line, going to have a flag at the end of the play. I think it's going to be a hit to the, a shot to the head by after the pass play, and that'll be 15 more yards. Southwestern drawing their son to midfield, just inside Panhandle's end of the playing field. The nose of the football touches that eye formation for Panhandle as Yarborough takes a snap, sticks it in the belly of Pitchford, the tailback right side. Pitchford's got five or six yards, bounced out of bounds in front of the Aggie bench on the other side, but Jerry Carruthers again. Well, Panhandle's team at 160, of course, he's not much bigger than the smallest men on the team. They've got 43. Right end split, flanker left side, man in motion. Here's the give to Pitchford, and Pitchford uh, trying to go up the middle. Pitchford gets to the 39, and Pitchford's going to be driven back by Mark Patterson of Southwestern, trying to lead the block up the way. 6'2", 240-pound senior, two-year letterman out of Booker Tank from Altus. Left end split, flanker right. Offset eye formation. Back to throw as Yarborough pumps once, pulls it down, sprints to daylight, then turns and throws incomplete as pressure was coming, trying to throw across the, the field uh, for the Bulldogs. It was Gary Bigelow as he's uh, being looked at by... You've always got to think about that. Shanks standing back at his own 45. Fake blitz. Yeah, they snap it to the short man. He bobbles it, picks it up. Running the uh, football is Pat Morris. He's got the first down as Morris down to the 30 to the 29, 28-yard line. So Pat Morris, the blocking back, takes the short ball at the 28-yard line of Southwestern. Panhandle down 14 to nothing. And trying to keep this high formation. Eric Yarbrough wears number two at quarterback, gives it off again, and down to the 25-yard line goes John Still this time, I think. Well, for, you know, according to Dr. Reimer, we'll try to keep him out of the game, but we don't have to be able to keep him on the sideline or not. To go for first down, the ball at the 25-yard line. In motion goes John Lyles to the right side. Yarbrough rolls right. Yarbrough looking. Yarbrough wanting to throw back across the grain. Now tucks and runs. Yarbrough inside the 20. And ran out of bounds somewhere. He's got also the seven-yard pickup on the scramble there by. Well, uh, things worked for Panhandle on that play. First and 10 at the 17 as Yarborough, the quarterback. Yarborough hands the football off, and up the middle again goes John Stell, or Stelly. I was done an eight. Check. Twins to the left side. Out of the split backfield. Bulldog showing maybe some blitz. Back to throw as Yarbrough hangs one up in the end zone. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, John Lyles. Uh, but uh, deep in the end zone, Lyles actually be almost like uh, 20, uh, be almost like 34 yards as far as he threw it. X hasn't had much opportunity this season. Only two or three in the extra point kicking department. The kick is up. The kick is good. There's a timeout on the field with 28 seconds left to go in the first quarter. It's Southwestern 14. The Worthy wallpaper is on sale for only $10.99 a row. Order from any book of... Yarborough from 15 yards out to put Van Andel on the board to make it 14 to 7. Here's the uh, kickoff by Shanks. Low kick fielded to Brown at the 10. East of the 15 to the 20. 
Willie to the 25, 30, and Willie out across the 35. Willie Brown, nice job of keeping upright, not outrunning his blocks and uh, staying behind him, and that's good. As you said that time, Willie Brown, they had the, the, the Bulldogs. Wide right is Milton, wide left is Reggie Jackson. Van Andel, four down linemen, two stand-up uh, linemen. Here's the handoff to Kizzy, and uh, Kizzy's going to be stood up and put backwards by Raymond Brawley. Raymond Brawley makes the hit, brawling each other up, saying, yeah, that was a great play, great play. Well, stay in there, guys. Let's get after them. They, they think they've got the momentum right now. Rick Hassel, 32 years old, in his third year as a Panhandle coach. Seven and Call your Culligan man. Call your Culligan man at 323-2041 in Clinton or toll-free 1-800-310-6336. Second and nine as we start the second quarter. The handoff to Kizzy up the middle as uh, Kizzy hits out close to the 40-yard line of the carry for uh, Southwestern. In the south for the Aggies was Jared uh, Tippins, the defensive end, 6'2", 245-pound sophomore from Altus. Texas Rangers, New York Yankees are tied 4-4 after five and a half. Four to four, Texas and uh, New York after five and a half. It'll be third down, six to go for a first down. Northwestern today, Dick Johnson's old school beat the sixth-ranked Michigan Wolverines. How about the Purple Pride? 17, Northwestern, 16, Michigan. That's the final. Northwestern beats Michigan, 17-16. Third down and six at the 40. Right in split, flanker in your side, out of the eye for Southwestern. Whistles. As movement by, well, the Panhandle linebackers, but Southwestern backing up, indicating it's going to be against them. Delay of the game. That'll be the fourth penalty against Southwestern. They've had two fives, one ten, and one fifteen so far. See a lot of that nowadays. Is it seems to take longer now to get plays called and sent in and uh, whatever whatever signaling you're using for it. Got a ball at the 35-yard line, wide to the right side for Southwestern goes Alvin Milton. Wide to the near side, Reggie Jackson in motion goes Keith Kizzy. Back to throw is Brad Woodard. Woodard being flushed out of the pocket, back on his heels, going downfield, it's caught at the 41-yard line with two defenders draped all over him. Keith Kizzy went up in the air and pulled it down. Lamar Chapman, along with Clay, or Henry Bell Cobbs, was on both sides of Keith Kizzy, but he went up in the 84-yard pickup, and that's okay, it'll be forgiven. Ball at the 41-yard line of Panhandle. Southwestern leads 14-7. Second quarter just underway. Here's the handoff up the middle to Kizzy. And Kizzy across the 35, breaks to the 30, to the 29. And a couple of more steps, and he might have been bye-bye Kizzy as Lamar Chapman jumped on his back along with Chris Lee. Chapman, the strong corner, 6'1", 160-pound junior from Glendale, Arizona. Chris Lee, a, a total offense in the ball game so far. First and 10 at the 29. Right end is split, flank to the left side. Here's the handoff to Kirk Talley on his first carry of the night. Kirk Talley, the fullback, goes straight ahead as Talley gets down close to the 27-yard line. Tackle was made by Frank Espinosa, 6'1", 260-pound junior from Glendale, Arizona, a transfer from Glendale Community Play Caring, but uh, he did a great job last, last week just blocking. Again, he's done the same, same this week. Second down. Here's the give to Kizzy. Kizzy coming outside, and again, Tally trying to run interference as Kizzy gets inside the 25 to the 24, 23 yard line. End of the stop for a Panhandle was Jared Tippins, a 245 pound sophomore from Altus. Pretty a matter of fact, he seemed really excited about being interviewed and was appreciative of the fact that someone recognized his blocking ability. And here's a pass. Thrown by Woodard. Is it caught or was it trap? They're going to say it was a catch. Reggie Jackson coming back for it. Looked like it uh, bounced off the ground into him. But we don't have the uh, luxury of instant replay to check it out. Well, they're discussing it. The uh, line averages 279 pounds from tackle to tackle. Wide outs to both sides. Out of the eye. Woodard, the quarterback, hands it off to Kizzy, and straight up the middle goes Keith Kizzy running behind Kirk Talley, and the tackle made by Frank Espinosa again, number 97. Well, that time the defensive line made the surge, and uh, it's going to place. Second down, nine to go for first down. Ball at the 18-yard line. In motion comes Reggie Jackson, quick pitch back to... Kizzy and Kizzy trying to cut back, falls down at the 19-yard line, coming in to fall on top of him, Melvin Sanders, along with Richard Chandler. Sanders, a defensive tackle, 260-pound senior from Heidelberg, Mississippi. Paul Chandler, a 220-pound junior for Southwestern. First time they've shown this one, twin outs to both sides. 
short drop by Woodard throws. It's bobbled by Caleb. He catches it and then is dropped at the 20 yard line, so may have lost a yard. Jeremy Caleb caught the pass out in the flat, bobbled it, and by the time he regained possession of it, he was tackled by the uh, Panhandle Aggies. One of them was Chris Lee, and a step by Steindorf. The ball snap spotted down. The kick is up, and the kick by Steindorf is good. There's a timeout on the field with nine minutes, 17 seconds left to play in the third, in the second quarter. It's the Southwestern Bulldogs 17, the Panhandle Aggies 7. Don't let your clothes leave town without you. Your clothes never leave town when you... The Southwestern Bulldogs will kick off to the Panhandle Aggies after the 37-yard field goal by Jeff Steindorf. Here's the uh, kick. The ball will be fielded by Darius Greer in the end zone. Goes down on one knee. Will not return it out. Looks like he's unhappy. Did he do that intentionally or unintentionally? I, I, I just, uh, I think he was probably told to do it. I, I think they don't want to have anything to do with uh, after the last kickoff they had. 17. The Jayhawks leading the Sooners. Yarborough, the quarterback. Yarborough hands it off to Pitchford, the freshman from Lawton, trying to go outside, tried to cut back, lost his footing and went down, and Johans Brown, first team All-American for Southwestern, drops in on top of him. Johans leads the team in tackles with 32 stops. Scores of other games, Adams in for Panhandle. Panhandle moving from south to north. The wind is, or north to south, that is. The wind out of the southwest again at about 5 to 10. Single setback, Yarborough back to throw, throws incomplete. Pass. I think was intended for Aaron Gomez, but uh, Gomez never looked back. He was running a fly pattern down the field, and John Lyles was another receiver into the center. Got our tailgaters up on the north end. The Utopia two tailgaters across Davis Road, watching from the uh, tailgates of their pickups. Back to throw. Here's a lateral as we got a flag thrown. It's the lateral to uh, face mask. Pitchford as uh, Pitchford coming around the near side. The uh, quarterback was about to be sacked that time. Yarbrough is in his face was Jason Crisp. And uh, I think face mask. there's going to be a face mask. I think Newberg is the one that's going to get whistled for it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. It'll be third down in order of the stadium, and then we got the two-legged Randy the Bulldog and what's going to be a hot uniform this afternoon, a hot costume. Timeout's going to be taken by Panhandle as the uh, play clock was down to about two seconds. Time out on the field, eight minutes, one second left to go in the first half at Southwestern 17, Panhandle. To go in the first half, 17 to seven, the Southwestern Bulldogs leading Panhandle. Panhandle had to waste a timeout or burn a timeout because the play clock was about to expire and rather than risk a delay of the game. Yarborough back to throw. Yarborough zips one out sideline, incomplete intended for John Lyles. As covering for Southwestern was Jake Jensen and also back was Mark Patterson, a junior from Matoe, but he's the blocking back. The punter is Shanks on fourth down. Ball snap back. Here's the uh, kick away. Fair catch signal horn made by Caleb at the 47-yard line. As in his face, had he decided to run, was Heath Fost. A 5'10", 195-pound junior from the right side. Is Alvin Milton wide to the near side. Is Reggie Jackson out of the eye formation. Panhandle four down lineman. Brad Woodard, junior quarterback for Southwestern. And we had movement by Southwestern as moving before the ball was snapped was Kevin Gatewood, offensive tackle. Kevin, of course, moving into that uh, tackle spot when they discovered that Marcus Royster was not uh, eligible. And Kevin Gatewood moved up from the backup spot to the uh, starting spot. Looked like he was getting up, but they were hoping to appeal it and get a favorable ruling. Royster is listed as a senior and already played two games. and He was eligible under NAI regulations, but not under NCAA. Here's the handoff to Willie Brown straight up the middle to the 45, which is kind of interesting because before the season started, we had another player that was eligible in NCAA, but wasn't eligible in AI. <laughs> so when you got two, two different uh, going into the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, that's Adam State, Western, uh, Mesa, uh, some of those schools, and that'd be a nice fit for them. They're in NCAA Division II also. Here's a pass thrown incomplete. And, uh, Unfortunately, Brandon Whitten, the offensive guard for Southwestern, was the nearest player to the ball. The flag has been thrown. Well, unfortunately, that's, that, that's exactly right, Chuck, because that's an illegal man downfield. That's going to be a loss of down. It's going to be a penalty for an illegal man downfield and a loss of down against the Bulldogs. So it's going to be third and a whole bunch after this. As you, you pointed out, the ball was thrown to uh, Brandon Whitten, and that pointed out to the official that, hey, Twin receivers to the right side this time for Southwestern, wide out to the left side in a shotgun formation. On third and 11, Willie Brown goes in motion to the right side, snap back to Woodard, 
Woodard moving around, lines up, throws long downfield, and overthrew his intended receiver, Damon Willis. And, of course, Willis last year finished second in the uh, National NAI track and field meet in the 100-meter dash at 10.49 time. Incomplete pass. Fort, somebody's blue balloon got away from him, floating away. High over Milam Stadium. Ball snapped back to Steindorf on the punt. High, smiling kick. Fair kick, signal four and made at the 16-yard line by the uh, Panhandle Aggies' Jerry Ballard. Ballard was back deep to receive it. Makes the uh, Yarborough any quarterback for Panhandle has been in all the way. High formation. Aggies looking for their first win. They're 0-5. The Bulldogs are 2-1. Conference opener for Southwestern. Handoff and uh, carrying the football is John Stelly. As uh, Stelly gets out to the 20. Tackle was uh, made by football junkies. They were in Antarctica <laughs> last night. Weatherford tonight. They may be out at the JV game against the Sarah Varsity tonight at Eagle Stadium, you think? Probably so. Left end split. Here's the handoff up the middle. Straight ahead goes the ball carrier for a Panhandle. I think this is Wayne Barlow. If it is, that's the first time we've seen him run. Yes, it is. Barlow number 44. Now, he was a tight end last year, starting tight end. They moved him to a fullback tailback position. It was three deep on, our, on what we were given. Uh, he was the starter today. Aaron Gomez, wide right. Are you saying you can't believe uh, depth charts? I'm not saying anything. I'm just making an observation. Here's the handoff. Uh, straight up the middle goes the ball carrier. Gets across the 25, up to the 26 before being driven back. Well, they're going to get a favorable forward progress, it looks like, from here. It's going to be close. It is going to be a first down. It's not even going to be close. He ends up back on the 24-yard line, but they mark him forward progress out to the 20. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes they get lost. And I kept watching, seeing, trying to see who was on the bottom of the stack. Back to Thoreau Yarbrough, pumps once, uh, throws long down the sideline, got a receiver there, knocked away. Gomez was the intended receiver. Back covering was Landon Curtis and also Jake Jensen. They were stride for stride with Aaron Gomez. 170-pound sophomore out of Dalhart, Texas. Landon, we gave you the float winners earlier, and we'll try to pass along some of the uh, marching competition winners. We'll do that at halftime if we don't get it done before halftime. Had lots of good bands here today. And off carrying the football again is Stelly. Is Stelly off the right side, fought his way across the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard, a lot of rough sledding trying to get that yard. Johan down nine yards to go for a first down. Wide to the right side is Chip Lee. Twins to the left side. One of them is John Lyles. Yarrow back to throw, being flushed out of the pocket, being chased. Better run, John. Or y Eric. Eric throws, pass. Picked up by Johan Brown. Brown has his second ice ski of the season. Well, Brown said his goal this year was to intercept two passes. He got one in the first game. He's got one here in the second game. He had never had a pass interception in his collegiate career, and his goal this season was to intercept a couple of passes, and he's got two. American, great one, one of the best to play the game at Southwestern. Trips to the left side. Wide out to the right side, out of the shotgun formation. Woodard takes the direct snap. Woodard back to throw, sees Damon Willis, sees also Kizzy, throws for Kizzy in the corner, incomplete. Kizzy diving for it down inside the five-yard line, just barely overthrown by Brad Woodard. His covering was Lamar Chapman for Panhandle. As you said, Damon Willis was on the, he was on the, uh, the goal pattern, as uh, the post pattern, as he just came out and went right, oh, there's a, there's a hanky down on the field, uh, it's going to be against the five, so actually it's almost a 22-yard penalty. 22-yard penalty assessment against the Bulldogs, loss all the way back to the 45, it'll be first and Akers to go. Here's the handoff to, ooh, Willie Brown, and Willie, or not uh, Brown, it's Keith Kizzy, and Kizzy gets sandwiched, he knows what a piece of bologna feels like now, because he was the bologna in that sandwich. As coming across to hit him was uh, Henry Bell done anything to put points on the board, and uh, when it looked like it was going to be an easy cakewalk, all of a sudden now it's uh, it's a dogfight in this ballgame. Southwestern has to go to the Panhandle 23 for a first down. They're at their own 44-yard line. Woodard throws out of the flat complete to uh, Brown, but Brown's going to be wrapped up immediately at the 45, so only a gain of about a yard or maybe a yard on the pass play. The tackle was made by Steve Horton, 6'2", 250-pound uh, Penn Hill will think they were going to go long and throw it short, but a one-yard one yard pickup is not what you need in this situation. Bulldogs shift to a shotgun formation. Twins to the right side. Twins to the left side with uh, Damon Willis in motion. 
Up the middle, throwing. Pass is incomplete. Woodard was throwing long down the sideline to Jeremy Caleb, overthrew him. Also even overthrew the defender, Lamar Chapman. Chapman was trying to catch up with that one. He was about five steps in or five yards in front of Caleb, and he couldn't get to it. I think it was a throwaway by Woodard. Andor back to punt it too deep for Panhandle. Jerry Ballard and Darius Greer are both back. Here's the kick, high spiraling kick. The ball will be fielded by Greer. At the 11, he fights out to the 14-yard line and is cut down by Southwestern's Michael O'Neill. O'Neill, a 6'3", 224-pound sophomore from Plano, Texas, tackling, uh, actually, is Jerry Ballard on the return rather than Darius Greer. First and 10 at the 14. Yarborough, Eric Yarborough at quarterback for the Aggies, who are looking for their first win. They're 0-5. Here's the handoff. Again, to the uh, freshman running back, or no, this is John Stelly, not uh, the freshman running back Pitchford. This is Stelly carrying the football. As Stelly gets to the 15 to go before intermission. Coach Sharp jogging back down the sideline after being over to talk to his offense. Gets back down and positions himself so he can watch the defense now. Second and nine. Here's the give. This is Pitchford, the freshman from Lawton. Breaks a tackle across the 20, out to the 25. He rolls. As leading the way that time was Shea Moran, the offensive right guard, 270-pound junior out of Cave Creek, Arizona. And out too many. Bulldogs uh, have all three of theirs left. We said the new scoreboard has uh, a place where it says timeouts left, but apparently it's either not working or they don't use it because it doesn't have anything up there. Here's the uh, handoff to Pitchford again, going to the left side, and Pitchford's going to be tackled by Brian Stansbury. Stansbury, number 44, 5'10", 221 pound junior out of Tulsa Union, a transfer from NEO, and a, a timeout on 25-yard line. Single setback for the Aggies. Eric Yarbrough takes a snap on play action, back to throw, throws across the middle, inter almost intercept, no! Not intercepted, flags flying all over the field, loose football, everybody's scrambling for it. Finally, Southwestern comes up with it. They lateral the ball as it's lateral to Ryan Stansbury. I thought it was an incomplete pass. Now, what? There's, there's a cap, and the referee's cap comes out. Well, they've thrown. What that normally means is the referee has already thrown his flag for a penalty, and now when he throws his hat, that means there's another penalty. It's going to be pass interference back here against the Bulldogs. And then the, the first penalty flag that was everywhere was going to be a forward lateral. Now, I don't know what the last penalty marker is, but, uh, or the penalty hat, I guess I should say, but uh, there's a lot of laundry on the field right now, and a lot of people trying to figure out what's going on. The and first penalty is going to be pass interference against the Bulldogs. And we've got an injured panhandle player. I thought Landon Curtis had the interception. Well, he did. And then he lost it. Uh, and then he lost it. It bounced around forward, and that's where, and then that's where all that, that started. But Curtis is going to be called for pass interference to make the interception. So that's what the penalty marker is back here is. And now the other ones, the, the one penalty marker is for a forward lateral. And now, but I don't know what the penalty hat is for. There's more yellow on the Milam Stadium gridiron this afternoon than you'll see in a construction site on I-40 going into <laughs> Oklahoma City. Man, I've never seen so many flags in all my life. Well, you know, six officials, I think there's six flags. And if the other guy had another flag, he'd have thrown another flag. Because right. he threw his hat. So a uh, beanbag. So it's probably going to be a, it's probably going to be a personal foul against somebody after the pen, after it's over. And uh, we'll wait to see. The, the guy that's hurt is, uh, I think, is the uh, is that Halliburton, I believe. Yes, it is. The tight end, number 39, Lynn Halliburton, is uh, helped up, built like a Halliburton truck. 51 seconds left to go. Here's Ted Thomas. He's going to tell us what it's all about. Ted Thomas, the referee, after a long conference, Thomas tells us we've got pass interference against Southwestern. Okay. And then an illegal forward uh, lateral by Southwestern. That's two. Then we've got unsportsmanlike conduct against Panhandle. All right. Then we've got unsportsmanlike conduct against Southwestern. All right. Well, what does all this mean? No. It's going to be passing. You know, what, it, what it means is, is that the Bulldogs are going to be whistled for passing interference. It's going to be 15-yard mark off from the 24-yard line, and it's going to stay panhandle football. That's what that means. Well, well, let's go to our sideline mic, Mike, Mike Sebo. We actually now, and after the 15-yard penalty assessment against the Bulldogs for pass interference, Jay Rader just announced the OU score, and they were cheered. Back to throw is Yarbrough. Handoff up the middle to Pitchford, the uh, freshman from Lawton, and Pitchford gets out to the 42-yard line. Tackle made by 
the uh, South Richard Bulldogs, Mark Patterson. Patterson, 270. Chef Kimmy Clark prepares all food with 100% olive oil. For a different and unique dining experience, visit the spare room inside South Richard Lanes in downtown Weatherford on a smash hit on South Broadway. Curly second down and six as we go back to play. Yarborough back to throw for Panhandle. Steps up in the pocket and uh, is going to be slowed and finally brought down at the 48. Grabbing him by the legs with Jerry Carruthers. Slowed him down and one of the other Bulldogs hopped on his back. He picked up yards, scrambling. 24 seconds left to go. Panhandle unofficial. <laughs> It'll be third down, two yards to go for a first down for a Panhandle as we go back to play after the Aggie timeout. We've got 22 seconds left to go before intermission. Panhandle trails 17 to 7. They'd like to score before halftime. Back to throw. Got a new quarterback. Loads up. Throws long downfield. It's intercepted by Oliver. 25-30, 35-40. Marshall Oliver, 45-50. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Panhandle. Chris Phillips was the new quarterback. Six-foot, 170-pound freshman out of U.S. Grand High School in Oklahoma City. Loaded up and threw long downfield. Marshall Oliver picks off the pass to end the uh, out to both sides. With 11 seconds left to go, single setback, ordered the quarterback, Panhandle with a four-man defensive front, seven into the secondary, here's a pass on the side, complete to Caleb, and Caleb will go out of bounds at the 42-yard line, that'll stop the clock with eight seconds left to go. What kind of numbers you show on Woodard, is he 10 of 16? Well, I've got 16, uh, actually that's 17th pass, one out of every three, but a lot better percentage today. Twins to the right side, man in motion, Alvin Milton coming to the left side, direct snap back to Woodard out of the shotgun, zips one, sideline, caught by Caleb, and Caleb goes out of bounds at the 30, and the clock stops, it is a first down for Southwestern, with four seconds left to go before half. Now the ball's at the 30, if he's spotting at the 37, down the kick is blocked, kick is blocked, now it can be advanced as a flag flies. Coming up with the uh, football for Panhandle was Lamar Chapman. There's going to that 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 uh, penalty marker is going to be a face mask. As uh, so, I think, as I understand the rules, this will be an untimed down that that the bull uh, that uh, Panhandle will get one untimed down here. As uh, you can't end the in the uh, end the half on a on a defensive penalty. So Yarborough will drop back to throw. Yarborough loads up, throws long downfield, and it's intercepted, picked off by Landon Curtis. He's to the 30, to the 30. Side-winding kick, Darius Greer will field it about five yards deep in the end zone, will not run it out, so Panhandle will start from the row on the 20. Clouds continuing to build up. They're not doing the junior varsity football game. I don't want to get rained on. Right, so I'm sure they're going to stick around and go to the football game. Eric Yarbrough, still any quarterback for the Panhandle Aggies, takes the snap, fumble, loose football, and Panhandle diving in the pileup. I think the Aggies have recovered their own fumble. Didn't see who it was intended for, but Yarbrough trying to take the ball and get it off. Uh, coming up with the football was still a Dan uh, Erringer, who's the offensive line coach, and I think he's Phoenix, so he's in there. With him in there, they'll be even bigger on the offensive line. Eric Yarbrough is the quarterback, gives it off. To, to Stelly, as carrying the football, John Stelly off the left side, gets out to the 20. Tailgate game in front of us is waving. Oh, that's Walker. Walker's one more, one more air time. Rolling right is Yarborough. Yarborough is going to be cut down to Marshall Oliver as Yarborough never could find anyone open to throw to, so there was a lot of open field there by Yarborough. If he beats, if he beats Marshall Oliver. Deep snapper is Randy Rowland. Ball snapped back high, pulled down. Here's the uh, kick away by Roger Shanks. Fielded by Caleb at the 35 of Southwestern. Eludes one tackler. Eludes a second tackler. Gets up to the 30 or 39 yard line. And finally, the uh, Panhandle punt return team brings him down. Buck uh, Braid, 6'1, 230 pound yard line. Southwestern leads at 17 to 7. 13.04 left to go. And from Dewey, Oklahoma. Wide out left is Reggie Jackson. Split right is Alvin Milton. Out of the eye, quick pitch back to Keith Kizzy. Kizzy trying to go outside, cuts back inside, and fumble, loose football. Panhandle has it. Kizzy coughs it up, and Panhandle has recovered the fumble. That's Southwestern's first turnover. Paul Sharp, when he came out of the dressing room, said the first drive that we have has got to be, a, it's important to have a navy blue with white helmets. Panhandle at the 34 of Southwestern on first down. 
And a big tackle for the uh, Southwestern Bulldogs is shooting through to nail the Abali for a loss in his own back end. A nice penetration there. Southwestern players, I don't know whether they're looking at an injury or an equipment adjustment. Kevin uh, Gatewood sitting on the bench. It's a shoulder. It's a shoulder. Shoulder injury, we're told. Back to throw is Yarborough. Yarborough flushed. Yarborough scrambling for his life. And Robert Newberg, once again, going to leg tackle him this time. Caught him from behind. So Robert Newberg, who came crashing down as a sack, as uh, there was some positive yardage gained on him. Twin receivers to the left side, wing to the right side for the Yankees. Yarborough takes the snap, back to throw. Yarborough throws across the middle. It's caught at the 20, down to the 19-yard line. John Lyles, nice job by Lyles. He split. The two defenders, Jake, and uh, it was an 18-yard pickup. Lyles has been the only one that's caught a ball today. Aggie that's received the ball. Wayne Barlow is in at fullback. He's 250 pounds. Stolle is the tailback. Wide out to both sides. Here's to give to Stolle off the left side. And ooh, Stolle's going to be put down. Great penetration that time of the Bulldogs. Gary Bigelow, number 95. Gary Bigelow, 6'4", 296-pound senior from Altus, the homecoming queen. Play action, sprinting right. On the naked uh, sprint out is the quarterback Yarborough. Gets away from uh, one tackler, but he will not escape the uh, grasp of Gary Bigelow. He got away from the backfield. It's going to be a hold against the Bulldogs. Then, uh, the ball is at the 22-yard line at the moment. They had to go down to about the uh, nine for a first down. And down in three, the ball at the 11 of Southwestern. Southwestern leads it 17 to seven with Panhandle threatening. Wide to the left side is John Lyles. Barlow, the big uh, fullback. Stolle is the tailback. Bulldogs in a four-man defensive front. Here's the give to Stolle, left side. He's inside the 10, then wrestled back across the 10 to around the 11-yard line. Hill education history major. And wide to the left side is Gomez, Aaron Gomez. Wide to the right side is John Lyles. Out of the offset eye formation. Here's the give to Stelly, and uh, Stelly, right side, gets down inside the uh, 10 to the 9 and close to the first down, depending on where the official is. They probably asked for a measurement here. Stelly was running behind Wayne Barlow down and stretch him out. And it will be short, as you said, by a foot or so. Might come up out of the uh, hole and throw it. They'll spot the ball at the 16-yard line, make it a 26-yard field goal attempt by Roger Shanks. Deep snapper is Randy Rowland. Back to Gomez, spotted down. Here's the kick. The kick is up, and it's high enough and long enough, and the kick is good. A 26-yard field goal for Roger Shanks. Time out on the field, 824 left to go in the third quarter. Your clothes never leave town when you take them to artistic driving cleaners. The Bulldogs have not been able to do anything offensively since the... Uh, it's the very first drive of the game. Here's the kickoff for Roger Shanks, a high kick. It's going to come down short and go out. No, stays in bounds, goes out of bounds at the 15. Thought for a moment he was going to stay in bounds and beat a field goal by Southwestern's Jeff Steindorf, a 37 yard right in split. Flag to the left side out of the eye. Brad Woodard, the quarterback, fumbles the snap and Panhandle, nope, almost came up with a football as Woodard had to wrestle it away from the Panhandle's Jared. And it just right now, nothing seems to be happening as the Bulldogs turn the ball. Milton wide left, Jackson wide right, quick pitch to Willie Brown, cuts back across the middle and Willie gets out to the 40 yard line. For Panhandle, Texan Moulton was one of the tacklers. It'll be third and five at the 40. Left side, Milton split wide to the right side, out of the eye formation. Panhandle four down lineman, a couple of stand-up linemen. Woodard back to throw, throws complete to Reggie Jackson out the flat. He breaks the tackle to the 45, gets out to the 48-yard line. Reggie got free of Lamar Chapman, but that way of Itawamba, Mississippi Junior College. Taking it all the way. Six-man defensive front again for Panhandle as they stack them up and two linebackers, so they got eight up on the line of uh, scrimmage. Here's the handoff to Willie Brown, and Willie gets out close to the 50-yard line. Tacking of an offensive tackle, replacing Jay Coffey. Coffey, six. A big guy from Big Lake. Wide out to the left side, Reggie Jackson. Milton's foot wide to the right side. Here's the quick pitch. Back to Willie Brown. Stutter step. Almost runs over one of his... Uh, Kirk Talley, and then it's going to be taken out of bounds back at the 45, a loss, a loss of yards as he was trying to find somewhere to go, and you can see when we're being made. Comes in. Uh, the Bulldog, western 46-yard line, left-hand split, flanker right. 
Woodard takes the snap, play action, rolls right, looks left, throws across the middle, complete to Milton, 35-40, Alvin to the 25, and Milton brought down at the 23-yard line. Alvin Milton. Clay Thomas was the tackler for the Panhandle Aggies. He's with eight coming into this ball game. It's another first down. Stronger than what he had been, probably at around 10 miles per hour. Wide outs to both sides. Woodard takes the snap, gives the football off, straight up the middle goes. Willie Brown as Willie gets down inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. Jason Penny. Left end slip, flanker right for Southwestern on second down and four. Here's the give to Willie. Brown up the middle. Willie gets down to the 16 as making the tackle was Panhandle, as we said, on a 90-man rug the first half. Third and three at the 16. Woodard. Looks like he might. He takes the snap. Here's the cross to the ball away. Lateral it back to Brown. Uh, Woodard goes back and gets it. He's at 30, and Woodard's going to be sacked back at the 32-yard line as coming in to make the uh, sack. Whatever, but uh, it's a 15-yard loss. It goes down as a uh, as a sack. Ball snap back spotted down. Here's the kick. The kick is low. It's long enough, but he's low and off to the left. No good. So the 48-yard field goal is off the left and low. It comes with three minutes. Chris Lee. Lee blocked the early one. He was coming up. Here's the uh, fullback. Uh, that's Wayne Barlow. Here's the give to the tailback, and straight up the middle on the uh, carry goes John Stelly. As Stelly is hit by Mark Patterson, number 45 of the Bulldogs, and also Johans Brown, number 33, All-American. Enough said. Johans kind of had a quiet. David Womack moving from left to right in defensive coverage, and now it'll be second down and nine as we go back to play after the Panhandle timeout. Twin receivers to the left side. Yarborough back to throw. Yarborough is going to be. No, he escapes the sack. I thought he was going to be tripped up for a loss back at the 30, but he squirts forward out to the 35. You haven't called his name before then. The New York Yankees, third down and seven. Man in motion, Lane Hayes. Here's the handoff to Candidate. Candidate left side, and Candidate gets across the 35, and it's stood up by a Southwestern Bulldog. Lane Hayes. Candidate down and five. Candidate was a conference of 38 yards a kick. Jeremy Caleb back to receive. Caleb out of Hobart. Here's the uh, kick. Caleb signals fair catch and makes the fair catch at the 28-yard line. Van Andel punting the ball away for the fourth time. And leading uh, Northwestern 28-14. to 14. That was in the second quarter up at Alamation. Wide outs to both sides. Woodard is the quarterback. Here's the handoff up the middle. I think this is Kizzy. You mentioned Kizzy a moment ago, and I think that's Kizzy this time as Kizzy gets to the 29. Mike Southwestern's offensive line, 279 pounds. The defensive front sophomores. Second and nine at the 39. Van Andel, four men, four down linemen, two stand-up linemen. Here's the uh, quick pitch. Back to Kizzy and to Kizzy. Across the 30, out to the 33-yard line. Tackle made by Panhandle Steve by way of the junior college in Florida. That's the quarter. Call your Culligan man at 323-2041 in Clinton or toll free 1-800-310-6336. It'll be third down and six as we go back to play, starting the fourth and final quarter. Southwestern leading Panhandle 17 to 10. Bulldogs moving from south to north now into a south breeze of about five to ten. Back to throw is Woodard, flips it down the flat, complete to Charwick Reed at the 40 to the 42 yard line. Charwick Reed, who moved in to take the place of injured Roger Moran, makes his first catch of the ball game. 6'2", 238 pound sophomore from Cleveland, Texas. I know, Clay, during the uh, pregame, you and I were visiting, and you made an interesting comment that our tight ends this season have been kind of non-existent. How many passes we've thrown to our tight ends? It'll be first and 10, the ball at the 42-yard line. Right end split, flanker to the left side, eye formation. Six-man front for Panhandle, four down and two stand-up. Here's the give to Kizzy up the middle, and Kizzy gets across the uh, 45-yard line. Roger Moran caught uh, one. So that's our second completion to a tight end. And of course, as you said, when we had junior rather than having the big tight ends this year, we got the uh, fleet footy wide outs. Milton, Reggie Jackson, Damon Willis. Here's the give up the middle and straight ahead. The ball carry gets out to the 49. And it was Kizzy again. parade this morning. Pom 
pom-pom girls dancing to the beat down below. Cheerleaders watching the game, getting ready to cheer if the Bulldogs do something good. And off up the middle goes to Kizzy, and Kizzy gets to the 48, close to the first down. It's going to be short by about, uh, well, we'll see where they're going to mark it. Uh, this crew is uh, not quick. Wide to the left side is Milton. Wide to the right side is Jackson. Four-man front this time for Panhandle. The pass across. The oh, it's almost caught by Milton. Had he caught it, he would have been gone because he had the secondary beat. The nice fake handoff that time to Kirk Talley up the middle of the fullback. Zing the ball in there. Twin wideouts to the right side. One of them is Charlie Reed, the, the tight end. He's spread out about five yards. Here's the handoff to Kirk Talley up the middle. Kirk across the 45 and down to the 40-yard line as he picks up 10. Kirk uh, kind of lost his balance. Looked like he was going to fall down. Regained his balance and got down to the 40-yard line. Trying to lead the way that time for Kirk Talley. 12.05 left to go. 17-10. Southwestern up. Southwestern with their hands full against the Panhandle Aggies. Right end split, flanker left side. Quick pitch back to Kizzy. Almost lost his footing, reverses his field, tries to go up the middle now as he dives forward to the 38-yard line. It will be close to a first down. And a nice block applied by the quarterback, Brad Woodard, as, they, as he came back. It depends on where they mark it. It's going to be just inside the 38. It's going to be just short. Up, and they're responding. Now the referee says Panhandle wants a timeout. There's a timeout on the field, 11. Nothing else is a back, back to play, here's quarterback Woodard keeping the football off the right side, trying to pick up the first down, and it looks like he surged forward enough before he got pushed back to get the first down. But we'll have to wait for the spot by the officials. Uh, it's going to be a good spot. It's going to be a yard. He, it's a good yard pickup, and it is a first down. Nice play there by Woodard. Wide out to both sides. High formation. Four-man defensive front for Panhandle. Woodard drops back to throw. Throws. Intercepted at the 20. To the 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Down the sideline goes Clay Thomas, and Thomas gets to the five. Cuts back inside. His tackle at the three, two-yard line. Kirk Kelly chased him down and made the uh, tackle along with Woodard. Woodard is through the interception. Kelly, the uh, fullback, tackles Clay Thomas. He picked his way down the sideline and almost scored the touchdown. Thomas said if they score, they'll go ahead and go for one and uh, tie it up because uh, there's overtime now in college football. Quarterback is Eric Yarborough. Yarborough calls his own number, tries to go straight ahead, and uh, he's going to be tackled for no gain. Had the ball stripped away from him, but the play had already been whistled dead. Mark Patterson got the ball away from him. The tackle was made by Brandon Tucker. Tucker is 301. Takes the snap, gives it off, and Stolle trying to go in off the left side. Might have picked up a half yard. Late flag. And we're looking to see the reaction of any of the players to what the official says. And I see one of the one of the Bulldogs, it's a face mask call against the Bulldogs. I saw one of the Bulldogs shake his head, and I knew it must be against the Bulldogs. And when a flag comes in late like that, Eric Yarbrough brings his team up, takes a snap, keeps the football in the sprint out, bootleg, sprints into the end zone, untouched for the touchdown. Nice Eric, thought, there's a penalty marker. Holding against the Panhandle. So they'll take it off the board as Eric Yarborough spreading into the end zone on the bootleg. Well, one on the halfback who, who faked the bulldog to be found. Twin receivers to the right side for Panhandle. Whistles before the ball is snapped by offensive center delay. Mike Spires and the Aggies are going to be whistled for delay of the game. So Panhandle had only one penalty before, now two back-to-back. And a very costly holding penalty, wiping out a touchdown. Wide to the right side for Panhandle goes John Lyles and also Aaron Gomez as another balloon gets free. Here's a pass thrown, deflected and incomplete. I think getting a hand on it was Robert Newberg, judging of the way Robert's jumping around and celebrating. 
Curry, we're down to eight seconds of the play clock. Seven seconds, six seconds. They're not even at the line of scrimmage yet. Five seconds, four seconds, and they're going to have to waste a timeout. Now, uh, if you have to wait for that, uh, it just doesn't give you any time out front. Chip Lee in at uh, tailback. First time we've seen him. Rolling right is Yarborough. Chip Lee just threw a nice block. Yarborough throws. The pass is intercepted by Johans Brown. Johans has his second pass interception of the night and his third of the season. Johans Brown, who goes to get a couple of pass interceptions this season, has three, and all three of them have come before the hometown crowd. Had one against Central and two against Panhandle. Uh, they took it down to the three, and the Bulldogs push them back, push them back, and hold them out. Yarborough, the quarterback, 9.43 left to go. Not Yarborough, Woodard, the quarterback, 9.43 left to go in the game. Woodard hands the football off, and up the middle goes Willie Brown. He gets out to the 29-yard line. Willie Brown, 5'10", 175-pound senior from Houston, Texas, out of Reagan High School. The freshman. Second down and seven at the 29. Here's the give to Willie Brown. Across the middle, Willie gets to the 35-yard line. Well, Southwestern leads at 17 to 10. Division of the play today, Western Technology Center first. Alpha Kappa Psi was second. Older, wiser learning students. The Owls were third. Woodard hands the ball off. Ooh, hard hit. Put on tailback Willie Brown trying to go up the middle. He was hit by big number 97, Frank Espinosa, a junior out of Glendale, Arizona. Screer out of Oklahoma City, Ballard out of Homney. Steindorf, low snap, one hop. Steindorf picks it up, gets the kick away quickly. Ball fielded by Ballard. Oh, Ballard is hit. At the 31, we got a flag drop. As they didn't give him enough room to catch it. I guess that's what the call's going to be. Is a punt from the 33 to the 33. That's a 34-yard punt. See what the penalty is going to be. I'm sure, it's going to be interference against the Bulldogs, and that's what it's going to be. And it, I think that's a 15-yarder. Did you see who got him? 17. The uh, hit was applied to Clifton Nugent. This is the Southwestern Administration Building, Room 205, or from any Miss Southwestern pageant board member or contestant. Tickets will also be available at the door. Here's the uh, pitch on the option. We've got a fumble and a scramble for it. Southwestern has come up with the football. Recovering the football is Brandon Tucker for Southwestern. And that, uh, that was a train wreck to begin with as uh, the quarterback Saturday night, and then they'll be in Durant to play Southeastern two weeks from this afternoon in a conference game. High formation, left end split. Here's the hand to Kirk Talley up the middle. He's got 15, he's got 20, Kiss him, goodbye! Touchdown, Kirk Talley, 33 yards. And Talley just, after he got through the initial line, there was nobody home, and Talley rumbles in to catch up with him. Here's the extra point kick. It's blocked. 95. Kick was uh, blocked this time by Steve Horton, the middle linebacker. So Steindorf has had a field goal block. Now he's had an extra point block. There's a timeout on the field, 7.35 left to go in the game at Southwestern 23, Panhandle 10. A high kick, ball fielded inside the five, out to the 10, to the 15-yard line, and tackled is Darius Greer. Good coverage downfield by Southwestern, and on the stop was Chad Crane, a senior out of Afton. Hope is the guy that uh, didn't block the, uh, the, the guy who blocked the extra point, met Steindorf, he's coming off and said, uh, sorry, man, and Steindorf said, that's okay, and they shook hands, so. Here's the handoff to John Stelly, a Stelly. Carrying out across the uh, 20, but we got a flag down at the 25. Bill Hots Brown and Mark Patterson in pursuit trying to tackle him. Well, there's three flags, so that's like uh, uh, whoever got ticketed got, got it's kind of like going through a uh, radar trap and everybody's seeing you. Face mask called against the Bulldogs. Goodness gracious, hey, that, that's the third face mask call we've had today. And L.A. John Stilley, 5'8", 195-pound junior out of Wyandotte, Oklahoma, transfer from NEO, Northeastern a &M Junior College at Miami. High formation. Here's the give to Barlow, the big fullback, first time he's carried across the 30 out to the 35. And I know Coach Sharp talked about him and said, boy, he's tough to bring down, and that's the first time we've 
called his name as far as carrying the football today. Landon Curtis in on the stop. Well, he is hard to bring down as he just kept breaking tackles. He was second down and three at the 35. Back to throw is Yarborough. Eric looks left, has to scramble right. Loads up, throws downfield. It's knocked away by Marshall Oliver. Oliver has won Oski earlier today and knocked that one away. Marshall Oliver, defensively, the strong safety for Southwestern, 214 pounds senior from Tecumseh. Along with Pepsi, distributed by the Pepsi Cola Bottling Company of Clinton and by Britton Kirkendall and Miller CPAs of Weatherford, Cordell, and Yukon. Third down and three, the ball at the 35. Here's the handoff to Barlow up the middle again, and this time the Bulldog defense will not allow the big man to go anywhere as they shut the gate in his face. Push him back across the 35. Didn't gain anything, I don't think. Ball snapped back to Shanks, 23-10, Southwestern by 13. Ball fielded by Caleb at the 26, running laterally. He's back to the 16, or back to the 21 and tackled by Chip Lee, who got downfield. Chip Lee, a 225-pound senior from Omaha. Caleb trying to find some running room, retreated backwards and round play at quarterback so far this season. Well, it seems like the Bulldogs just can't put enough distance between them and the team they play to bring in anybody. Of course, Christian Stillings and Chris Roberts are the backups. Here's the handoff. Up the middle goes Willie Brown. Tackle made by Jared Tippins, 6'2", 245-pound sophomore out of Altus. Southwestern baseball pitcher Kevin Luffy James and Dean Hodge, former Southwestern baseball player, is one of his assistants. High formation, second down and five. Here's the give up the middle. Willie Brown across the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, foot race, 45, 30, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, oh. 10, 5, touchdown, Willie Brown. And it's from the 28 yard line. That's a 72 yard, touch, 73 yard touchdown run from the 27. Willie Brown. Yep, the kick is no good. Kick is no good. There's a timeout on the field. 442 left to go. It's Southwestern 29, Panhandle 10. Weatherford, they're in the Feist area wide, yellow pages. The Southwestern Bulldogs will kick off to Panhandle after the 73 yard touchdown run by Willie Brown. Here's the kickoff by Steindorf. A high kick floating down as Greer will field the ball at the 12. He's to the 15, to the 20. Greer is tackled at the 19 yard line. Coming down field to make the tackle is Chad Crane, a 208 pound senior out of Hafton. He's the years. Wide to the right side for the Aggies is Dion Earl. Trips to the right side, and they're one man short, apparently, as the uh, tailback was not in there. Jimmy Candidate checks in late, and Yarborough goes back and tells him what the play is and what the count is. Down to three seconds of the play clock, back to throw. Yarborough zips one out. It's caught at the 29-yard line and forced out of bounds is John Lyles. At the 30, he'll pick up the first down. Well, that was a nice, smart play by Lyles. He caught the ball. He's the only one that's caught passes today. He's caught at the 30 for the Aggies. Trips left this time, wide out to the right side. Back to throw. The pass up the middle, complete. Oh, my goodness, what a hit on John Lyles. As Lyles was wasted after he made the catch, but he hung on. Landon Curtis bent him back over backwards, but he held on for the... 10, twins to the left side, twins to the right side, single setback, Bulldogs in a four-man front. The other seven are two linebackers and then the rest in the secondary. Handoff up the middle and the ball carrier is planted by Brandon Thompson. As carrying the football that time was Jimmy Candidate. Brandon Tucker, excuse me, not Thompson. Brandon Tucker, 6'4", 301 pound junior from, mid, uh, from Los Angeles, a transfer from Midwestern made the tackle. Second down and 10, the sun is back out from behind the clouds with 3.48 left to go. Retreating the throw, Yarborough's pass incomplete. Pass was intended for Aaron Gomez. Jay, Jake Jensen was closing and Jake White Shoes Jensen almost had that one. Down and 10, trips to the left side. Yarborough back to throw. Yarborough steps up. Yarborough loads up, throws deep. It's deflected away by Landon Curtis. Landon Curtis along with 
David Womack were back covering the intended receiver that time for the Panhandle Aggies. Fish out of Pampa, Texas. Panhandle scoring for it on fourth down and 10 and down to 19. Not going to punt it. Back to throw is Yarborough. Steps up. Oh, my goodness. Yarborough is hit from behind by a train. Robert Newberg, big 98. Oh, and Newberg is helping up Yarborough as Yarborough paid the, the uh, maximum price on that 185. Transferred in and took the quarterback job. Christian Stillings transferred from Virginia Tech. Takes the snap. Hands the football off, and the ball carrier falls down. Lost his footing. Chad Vaughn, freshman, Richard freshman out of Mustang. Went down as Coach Sharp putting in some reserves now. Xander is in at center for Southwestern, 235-pound sophomore from Clarendon, Texas, replacing Edders. Stillings takes the snap. Stillings hands the football off, and straight up the middle carrying the football this time is uh, Chad Vaughn again. As Vaughn picks up yards. Brandon Whitten is in on the offensive line. He's been in there earlier. Uh, not playing football. I would imagine studies a lot. And Jeremy Teague at a fullback. Jeremy Teague from Clinton in at fullback. Jeremy had been listed as a backup uh, tight end and fullback today. Hands it off to Jeremy, and Jeremy hits out to the 41-yard line of Panhandle. Jeremy Teague from Clinton on the carry. How about those red tornadoes? 54 to nothing last night against Oklahoma City Southeast as Mike Lee's bunch is now 5-0. They're waiting to celebrate. Left end split. Flanker wide to the right side. I'm not sure they've already I'm not, I'm not sure they've waited. Stillings hands it off to Jeremy again. Jeremy straight ahead. What a load across the 40 to the 39. He may have picked up the first down. Big Teague would not be denied. Jeremy Teague carrying for Southwestern. Jeremy, a 6'1", 231-pound junior from Clinton. Humble looked like he went over to the quarterback to, uh, to the coach and said, I don't want any more of it, and he's not going to get any more. Phillips, a uh, freshman out of U.S. Grant High School in Oklahoma City, was in once earlier today and threw one pass back in the first half. Phillips retreats to throw. Phillips steps up. Phillips being chased. Phillips running for the sideline and will go out of bounds and avoid the uh, hit as he was chased out by several Southwestern Bulldogs including Michael O'Neill, Brian Stansbury, and Devin Wilcox. Wilcox, a 200. Was looking at his wristband to see what play they just signaled in. He called it, and then he was looking at his wristband as he came out. Twin outs to both sides. Twin wide outs. Phillips back to throw. Phillips scrambling up the middle. is going to be leg tackle for a loss for Michael O'Neill. Got in behind him, pulled him down. 1-11 left to go. Panhandle has no timeouts remaining, so they can't stop the clock unless they throw an incomplete line at linebacker. I believe uh, Chad Crane is the other linebacker. One of the cornerbacks out on the side is Clifton Nugent. Back to throw is Phillips. Steps up, steps up, throws. It's intercepted. Pass is picked off by the Bulldogs, John Featherstone. Featherstone across the 35 to the 40, out to the 43-yard line. Featherstone had missed some playing time because of an injury. Featherstone, a 6'1", 193-pound junior from Los Angeles, comes up with the interception, and that is the fifth pass interception thrown this afternoon by Panhandle. And I don't know whether we have a record in the book on that or not. How many pass well, interceptions in the game? to race it, Chuck. They've just thrown a, they threw a flag for holding against the Bulldogs. So... It. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's going to be post-possession or, or not here. We're waiting to see what the officials are going to say here. It's against Sam Houston State in 1968. So let me look at team records. But they already moved the chain, so I have to get them back in place. It'll be first and 10 at the 45. As a penalty against the Bulldogs for what? Holding? Holding, uh-huh. And a first down for Panhandle. Back to throw is Phillips. Sprints right, throws, the pass is caught at the 35 and out of bounds at the 31 is the receiver for Panhandle, but there's a flag in the play. Ty Bentley made the catch, 5'9", sophomore from Laverne. And erased that play, a 13-yard pass play will be taken away from Panhandle. There's another penalty with 28 seconds left to go. Fans heading for the parking lots, trying to beat back at the 50. Twin wide outs to both sides. Phillips out of U.S. Grant takes a snap. Back to throw. Phillips throws across the middle. It's incomplete. Pass was intended for John Lyles at 5'9". He just couldn't leap that high. By the way, the, the team record for most interceptions in the game is six versus the 50. Trips 
right, left hand split. Single setback. Phillips back to throw. Steps up, Phillips, steps up, Phillips runs into a tackle. Phillips kept stepping stepping up, and the more he stepped, the bigger crowd he drew. Devin Wilcox in on the stop for Southwestern along with Jason Crisp. Crisp, the two.
pass incomplete and here's to number three, Alvin Milton.
Sherwick Reed, 86, is first down.
25 yard line. There is a flag at the line of scrimmage.
to Southwestern Oklahoma.
four o'clock.
the five yard line. It's third and five.